Hi, and welcome to this latest MidFix podcast. Uh, this session is going to be on technology and how it affects M&E with a particular view on offsite as well. Um, helping us out with this podcast today is a couple of MidFix employees. We've got Tom and Sky, who are our senior CAD engineers. So thank you for attending. And we're just going to open it up really, first of all, by saying in your day-to-day -day work, how do you use the technology that you've got at hand? What is that technology? And how does it interact with the customer? So sorry, it's three questions in one to start with, but over to Tom. <laughs> well, obviously, we are primarily working in the 3D space. So obviously, we draw in 3D CAD, um, although from time to time, we do have customers who only work in 2D. Um, I guess technology-wise, for the advancement of m and &E, really the biggest players are the likes of Revit and Navisworks. Um, the collaboration between us and the other contractors on site um, enables us to work together. Okay. Enables us to clash check models. You mentioned off-site, obviously. Yeah. The majority of our projects are prefabricated here and then delivered to site. So by using the customer's 3D models and drawing around them, it ensures that whatever we design and manufacture will actually work when it gets to site instead of needing alterations. Okay, so can I ask you, just going back one step then, maybe Sky, how do you, how do you receive that initial communication from the customer is it electronic is it a, to use the old terminology a fact packet drawing how how do you get it, the information in it depends on the the size of the project usually um, if it is a fact packet drawing we try to push back because it's very hard to work on fact packet drawings and create an accurate design um, right. so we would always prefer to receive a, a Navisworks or a Revit model or a DWG model step step file anything like that so that we can create an accurate um, design for the customer and then we would give that back in the same format if they if they require it but Navisworks is probably our go-to because you can see everything within the surrounding environment so again class for clash um, clash checks and th checks and things like that and yeah. um, you're not stepping on anyone else's toes you're not creating an issue on site because you're you've worked within the space on the model as it as it were Okay then, and uh, Navisworks. I'm assuming then, is that fairly universal now, or we we don't really struggle to get Navisworks models. It usually, unless it's a a very basic design and there, there is no model at all. Um, if there is a model of sorts, there tends to be a Navisworks model in there somewhere. Yeah, what we find with with our customers is that <coughs> often the details will could be drawn in a variety of programs. Some will use AutoCAD. Um, obviously we use Inventor, some we use SolidWorks or whatever, mm -hmm. but the main models are pretty much all the time drawn in Revit, which then directly exports to Navisworks. So as Sky said, pretty much every project that we come across of, you know, over, an, over a certain size, there is Navisworks models of, because that's, at the end of the day, that's the industry standard. Okay then. Uh, and something I'd be interested to know, I mean, your, your, your initial drawing that you send back to the customer, uh, in any other industry, that would be, let's take automotive or aerospace, that would be the final drawing and it'll be signed off and done. That seldom happens in M&E, is that right? You'll go through several, several versions before we get to a signed off. Why does that happen? I think it's things happen on site, things change all the time. Um, so there may be, it may be something as simple as oh this pipe's now gone over here or little changes because of a clash on site, mm. um, and that's probably the biggest change. It's a change to the model that we've received or a change to the the supports that uh, the units that we're supporting or services. Okay. So one, that, sorry. I was just going to say one thing we're noticing at the moment is because of supply issues. Yeah. People are having to change components and equipment. So they might say, "Good point." <coughs> well, I had, I had one job the other day where they said, "You know what? We can't get hold of such and such brand of air handling unit, mm -hmm. so we've had to go with another manufacturer." So the design had to change. Okay, it was a very small change, mm -hmm. but still but a change. Know, still, you know, if yeah. if suddenly 
there's a load of pump sets and it's like well actually we can't get these pumps anymore we're gonna have to swap manufacturers it's likely different fixing yeah um, hole patterns you know all that kind of thing different sizes different weights and that's not actually we, we can we can't control that the, our customers can't control it yeah, yeah. Um, it's an there's always factor, things, yeah. yeah there's yeah. always things like that, that that have an impact on the changing designs so is that one of the reasons then why uh, we're all familiar with BIM is that one of the reasons why then that the you know in an ideal world that initial model that's done of the of the building is the final model in which case BIM is perfect it works all the way through but seldom is that the case because of all the changes that go on so is that do you think that's one of the biggest issues with BIM at the moment and how do we how do we work towards getting that right that's yeah, an impossible question to answer it, but it is but that's <laughs> uh, that is the issue it's there's so many changes that I think it's probably time constraints and everything things have to change whereas probably like you've mentioned other industries mm. sometimes it's more product development and it's a new system so there is no time constraints whereas this is that we have a deadline we have to meet it we need an AHU, we can't have that one, let's change it. Yeah. So that model is, you're never going to have a signed off model until the day it's commissioned, everything's commissioned and everything. So I think that is the biggest issue. Um, going forward, all you can hope, probably things such as getting things in, I think we are hoping for it all to improve soon. Right. Um, so perhaps that could have an impact on it, but will it fully be a signed off model that's ever that's never going to change I, I doubt it will automation ever allow for that it's a tricky one it's a mindset change it right, all well boils down to which is I know is a that's entire a, that's conversation an even, an even harder change within our industry <laughs> um, yeah okay. but I mean if you imagine this <clears throat> a principal contractor they employ their architects who draw up the Revit model mm -hmm. and then obviously there's your main contractor who will you know they might draw all the pipe work in all the chillers and yeah. mechanical equipment and such like they might then subcontract the pipe work manufacturer yeah and fitting out to another company who then might subcontract you know the sort of swept bends or whatever out to another yeah, company yeah, yeah. and you go further further down everything's the line. getting lost in translation down exactly. the line yeah, yeah and you end up with folk on site who are four or five tiers down from the main contractor yeah and they might not even have sight of any navis works model they yeah. might have just been told you know what we need ducting to run from here to here yeah and they'll just go and fix the ducting up yeah and then of course when the main contractor comes in and says oh we need to install such and such it's yeah like, well the ducting's in the way yeah. yeah and yeah so i think a lot of it is down to to mindset everyone's got to buy into it so do you think then we need to simplify things moving forward? I think as well as that is communication. So when there is a change to a model, making sure it does feed down the whole chain, which is very hard to do, but we've had numerous occasions where we, we've got an outdated model. Mm. And if, if we were just informed earlier on, it, and likewise when you get to further down the chain, if everyone knew that, it would probably because it comes back up the chain as a, a completed model yeah oh you're gonna have to move yours because they had an old model so you've got to change well, you know it, yeah, yeah yeah i think so it, it's a group effort which is very hard <laughs> but it's um on a project you it's a whole it's a team effort so it, it's got to be everyone's got to know the same information yeah and you, you've actually hit on something there that's been a common thread through several of these podcasts now and that's that early engagement yeah that's without that nothing happens really so uh, even the more even the more simplistic a simple trapeze design without that early engagement you know it might as well be a, a complex plant room uh, that you're looking at you need to have that early engagement and continued engagement and continued keeping, engagement keeping in touch with them throughout the project and any yeah. changes then become apparent yeah yeah, sooner rather than later. Yeah. Okay. Then. So typically on a day to day basis, then as 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 CAD designers, what are your uh, what are your pain points? What do you struggle getting out of the customer? What would make your life a lot easier and therefore a lot quicker turnaround for the customer? Are there any sort of typical areas that you struggle with? I think the more information, the better. So, for example, sometimes we get a worst case bracket, hmm. bag packet sketch. Yeah. But realistically, 
you have to consider the whole run to produce a, f a full design. Mm -hmm. um, they could, you, well, this one bracket, yes, it's good as a, a check and it's very valid for that bracket, but it could change when you go 10 brackets down the line and there's a there's a branch coming off the pipe at that point. Yeah. Um, so I think that comes from models because mm -hmm. we can then, if we have to change a bracket slightly down the line, we can and we can see it's there and we know that there needs it there needs to be a change there but when we, it's fag packet sketches that's up my pain point personally I right. think we're doing these half half designs really it's not the full picture we don't know what we're missing yeah. exactly yeah. exactly so there could be a complex load path that it's having an effect on the bracket yeah. that we're designing that we're not aware of yeah. so where possible a model to work off yeah you say just, that's right just the yeah. full information yeah yeah a model is is massively beneficial because right. we can see what what else is actually around it as we've spoken about before clash detection and such like yeah um, and we've had one fairly recently where well, that's never going to go away was, everything's no. always going to clash <coughs> isn't it so. yeah but we've well we've got a project on at the moment <coughs> where there's a beam encasement um obviously for for fire protection yeah um if we'd just been given the pipe work and the cable tray and said design a trapeze, mm -hmm. we would have come up with something that would have worked. But actually, we've got the model, and they say, well, you know, you can, you've got to stay 70 mil away from this steel beam here, 50 mil away from yeah. this wall there. There's things like that that a model is really invaluable for. Right. But then, with the model, you have to have the information. Yeah. So what we try and do um, on most of our projects is when we when we get it through we'll actually have a call with the customer and we might go through any models that they've given us and said well you know what do i need to look out for what's the potential yeah um pain points where am i going to trip up what's things that i need to be aware of so actually when we're designing um we can make sure that it's right first time which is our so you, goal. so you can never have enough information then is that what you're saying correct right yeah. okay then so this is how you do things at the moment and you're quite proficient at what you do what does the future look like what's coming with regards to tech in in our industry there's there's an awful lot on the horizon but whether it will ever become mainstream hmm. is a question i mean there's like one thing that i'm quite passionate about is AR and yeah. VR, yeah. which integrates with the whole BIM idea. Um, you can use AR with Revit, um, and I know there is a few sites um, that folk have been trialling it on um, mm -hmm. with <coughs> you know Microsoft HoloLens and the likes. And technology like that will make a massive, massive impact because, you know, they put on a set of goggles or whatever and look up and they can say well my pipe needs to go exactly here and then here and then here because there's a duct that's going to be here and you know in okay. reality they're just looking yeah. up at a looking blank at the shell blank, right. yeah ceiling yeah. but they can see everything there but the problem is with that is that there's a massive massive cost attached yeah and it kind of goes I guess it goes back to the the sort of how many stages down the line you know, you might find you, your main contractor and maybe it, it, a couple of, stop couple of subcontractors yeah. Yeah. may use those kind of technologies in, I don't know, 10 years' time maybe. Yeah. It might be mainstream for, for those kind of guys. Mm -hmm. But when you've got Joe Bloggs in his van who just comes in and chucks a load of sprinkler pipe up, yeah. he's not going to want to pay thousands of pounds for all this high-tech gear. Yeah. So... In principle, it's a, f you know, it's fantastic evolvement. If it's seen it through to make, the nth it degree, it could make yeah. a massive difference to yeah. how we build. And I mean, the time savings and cost savings would be pretty dramatic. Mm -hmm. But as with BIM, if it's not a literal cradle to grave, yeah, yeah. it's not going to work. Yeah, there's no point doing it. I mm. think as okay. well as that, though, I think compliance is becoming a big issue. Um, well, not an issue. It's good that it's happening. Absolutely. People, yeah. people need designs that are, they can prove that it's fit for purpose. And I think that is going to reduce. If you've got something designed, for example, for as M&E supports, if you've got something designed and fabricated properly 
and you've got the report there to say that it's it's fit for purpose yeah it's compliant you're very reluctant then to go back and change that so i think that will help in the future when people have to have this confirmation of the design or the um the sign off as it were yeah you're no longer going to have people coming back and doing doing the changes which for us is going to save so much time mm -hmm. because they're going to be it takes more time and it takes more money yeah to, absolutely to do yeah. those and if there's other areas that it's always m &E that's often left to the last minute and so it is, yeah. time is yeah. a massive um constraint really so i think as we we take these design early engagement full designs full compliance early on yeah it's going to minimise the ability to change things at the last minute on site. I think that's a really valid point. And again, that's something that's come from uh, from several of these podcasts, that the, the compliance is becoming one of the big issues. It's not mm -hmm. the fact that the bracket, that's never going to fail. The fact is you've got the trace behind it to yeah. prove it won't fail. And the other big thing, in, uh, and something that's quite common in, in m and &E is uh, parasitic loading, where you've got somebody coming in afterwards and yeah. piggybacking off a bracket. Well, the design bracket, doesn't allow for that mm -hmm. if you want to do that you've got to do a separate bracket with a separate load calculation to allow for that loading so it, it's it, it is the future it's the way yeah. things need to go and slowly you know I, I truly believe that uh, the industry is going that way but it to go back to something Tom said it's a mindset change which is a lot harder than any form of monetary investment for the technology it's changing the mindsets it is but when people start to ask for that proof <clears throat> Yeah, it's not really a choice anymore. <laughs> Which is it's great. That's what needs to happen. Yeah. It is. I think it's a good thing. Perfect, and that's a good example of how technology allows us to to answer that particular question because yeah. that's the only way of doing it. Yeah. Yeah. The, the early engagement thing is yeah is really big. I mean, they've got a job on at the minute where we're having to move pipe work because of our support structure. Mm -hmm because we're, we're designing, we say, okay, we've got a massive header here, it weighs a couple of tons, we're gonna, you know, we need to have support here, a support there, but we can't because there's a pipe in the way, so well, actually the only option is to move that pipe. Okay. But yeah. if we'd <coughs> come in from the beginning, it wouldn't be there. Yeah. When the pipe work was actually being designed, yeah. and we'd actually had a hand in the design of the pipe work, yeah. and we were able to design the support structure around it, yeah. then we'd have saved hours of time for our customer and for us. Yeah. Um, so it's trying so to it's consolidate that work yeah. to, to one and this consultant as opposed to several, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's, I guess it's traditionally the pipe work and the units, equipment and such has been the main thing. The supports have almost been a, an afterthought mm -hmm. traditionally. At least that's what, that's what we find. Um, but I think really it's making sure that contractors are aware of the importance of getting in there early and making sure that your supports yeah, yeah. are fit for purpose. Because I'm assuming a lot of your time, you, you guys are called in at the 11th hour, mm. okay? Which I, I'm not saying a rush design is a bad design, but certainly more time on the design is clearly beneficial, yeah? Yeah, and Absolutely. from our point of view as well, if it, to help, we know why it comes in at the 11th hour mm. and we know why we have, you know, it it's the nature of the industry mm. but that's what we can do we can help to make that easier and speed it up so if there is a little change then we can make it not a big it's easy to to, to do that quickly and it's not back and forth for, and by that time there's another change I think it's it will help on site if we help to make those changes easier because they're bound to happen yeah but it will also become apparent that how many changes are being made sort of thing. I yeah, think yeah, yeah, it, yeah. They go together with working early on. Yeah. yeah. We can help you and, and you can help us to create the supports, but it's a bit of give and take really. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. That's great, that. So do you see anything else uh, on the horizon for, for tech in this industry? Or is it, are we going to leave it with Tom's virtual reality and augmented reality? We'll be wearing headsets next time. We'll be all be wearing headsets, yeah. <laughs> the PPEs... <laughs> I forget most of my PPE most of the time, so having to wear a, a set of goggles as well is uh, You'll no longer have a to big drive ask. to site, though. No, that's the point, yeah. That's the point. You can do it all from an, the warmth of your office, yeah. I guess there's, there's another thing. I mean, it's been around for a while, but the likes of 3D scanning. Mm. Um, right. Which we've had it on a couple of 
very large projects mm. and it can really help because sometimes we might be given a I, I'm thinking of one it was a um, I think it was an energy for waste project that we were working on and we had a Revit or Navisworks model of the site mm. but it wasn't accurate it had concrete dishes and they'd actually been set differently on site Obviously, that was critical because we were fixing a load of supports onto the concrete. So we actually managed to get them to do a full 3D scan of the site. Oh, okay. And we actually imported that straight into Inventor. Okay. And could draw around it. Mm. So that's um, the actual application. And that then, was yeah. literally yeah. down to the millimeter. I mean, yeah. it, it had um, JCB loadors and all sorts on it. Mm -hmm. um, it was highly accurate. 3D scan of the whole site so there's technology like that which when you are needing literal millimetre accuracy it's there. can be invaluable um, and at the end of the day however accurate a Navisworks model is or a Revit model is it's never going to be perfect on site No. no. Um, okay. so there is yeah, the likes of 3D scanning and such like if it needs to be really, really accurate, then yeah. technology like that can be invaluable. Yeah, I agree. I, I think that's an amazing technology, and it's something that will, it would revolutionise it because you can miss things in models. Mm -hmm. It's not it. You can't miss anything when it's it's. It, it's literally yeah. Like that yeah, is what yeah. it is. So, uh, yeah, I agree with that. Okay. Well, yeah. Fingers crossed that happens sooner rather than later. Then. <laughs> so just as a quick summary, then to make, I'm not here to make our life any easier, but. Certainly early engagement, Definitely. a model where possible, yeah. preferably an accurate model <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> of the building we're working on. <laughs> and then, yeah, the future looks exciting, more tech coming through, hopefully more automation coming through, and being able to filter it down the tech so it's actually usable on site as opposed to just the top primary and secondary subbies on that job. The people doing the install, that's where the real nitty gritty is that's the coal face that's where we need the the tech to come down to yeah mm. access yeah. to information for everyone great mm. and it's not it's not difficult to achieve actually um depending on your industry i think Tom, but yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes but what i mean is that actually if we improve the communication yeah and the early engagement and the yeah. early engagement is doable i don't think we're asking for the impossible no, no, not at I all. Don't, I don't think it is are. it is achievable, and like you say, there's a lot of exciting tech and stuff yep. coming out. But the problem is, with any new tech, <laughs> is it just yep. a new, next big shiny thing, or is it actually going to help? Yep. It'll only help if it has everyone's buy-in and everybody embraces it. Thank you for that. On that note, I'll let you guys get back to work. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much.